Now I'd like to briefly focus on a topic known as lactose intolerance. Now, lactose is a disaccharide sugar molecule, and what that means is it actually consists of two individual monosaccharides. One of them is galactose, and the other one is glucose. And these are connected by a special type of bond known as the beta 1 4 glycosidic bond. Now, these lactose molecules are found in milk products and other dairy products. So, if you ingest things like cheese or ice cream or milk itself or let's say yogurt or sour cream, all these dairy products basically contain lactose. Now, normally, if we ingest the lactose, eventually it makes its way into the small intestine of our body. And once in inside our intestines, a special type of digestive enzyme is released known as lactase. And what lactase does is it's able to actually use water molecules to catalytically cleave this glycosidic bond. And so we form these two individual monosaccharides, sugar molecules, so the glucose and the galactose. And once we form these monosaccharides in the lumen of our small intestine, only then can the cells actually uptake these individual monosaccharides into their cytoplasm. Before that, in this stage, they can't actually uptake this relatively large molecule due to its size. Now, some individuals are basically intolerant to lactose, and this condition is commonly known as hypolactasia. So what happens is these individuals who have hypolactasia basically have some type of deficiency in the activity of this lactase enzyme. And so if the enzyme cannot actually carry out its function, that means it cannot break this bond. <clears throat> it cannot break the bond. And so if these two individual monosaccharides will not be formed, then this disaccharide will not be uptaken by the cells of our body. And so there will be a buildup in the lactose in the lumen of our colon and the small intestine. So colon is the large intestine. And this causes symptoms such as gastrointestinal discomfort, so flatulence, this basically means the passing of gas, digestive problems, so basically the inability to absorb fats, lipids, and proteins, so diarrhea, watery stool. The question is why? Why is it that if an individual has this condition we call hypolactasia, so basically they're intolerant to lactose, and if they actually ingest the lactose, there will be a buildup of the lactose, but why is that buildup, or why does the buildup actually lead to these problems. Well, in our gut, we basically have many, many bacterial cells. In fact, we have 10 times as many bacterial cells as the cells inside our body. We have over 100 trillion bacterial cells inside our body, inside our gut. And this is about three pounds of bacterial cells. Now, these cells, just like any other cells in nature, actually need ATP molecules to survive. And these cells use lactic acid fermentation. And when there's a buildup of lactose inside our colon, these cells will use the lactose, the bacterial cells will use the lactose and break that lactose down to form ATP molecules. In the process, that will form lactate, so lactic acid. And if there's a buildup of lactic acid lactate in our colon, that will cause the water to move out of the cell and into that lumen of the colon. And that will lead to watery stool, so diarrhea. In addition, these cells, when they break down the lactose, they also produce things like hydrogen gas and methane gas. And that will lead to buildup in pressure. It will cause swelling and that will lead to flatulence as well as gastrointestinal discomfort. Now, these digestive problems can be a result of the combination of the gas buildup as well as the diarrhea, and it will basically cause the inability of our system, our GI tract, to basically absorb things like proteins and fats. Now, lactose intolerant people can actually avoid these list of problems by doing one of two things. So, by not eating these dairy products, because if you don't eat the lactose, then there will be no lactose buildup in our GI tract. Or, as they eat those dairy products that contain the lactose, they can also ingest enzymatically active enzymes, lactase enzymes. Now, 
A much more severe version of lactose intolerance is known as classic galactosemia. And individuals who have classic galactosemia basically have an inability to actually digest the galactose molecule. So these individuals can actually break down that lactose into these two individual monosaccharides and the cells can then uptake these two sugars. But then those individuals with classic galactosemia cannot actually break down this galactose molecule. And the buildup of the galactose can lead to many different problems as we'll see in just a moment. Now, Classic galactosemia is an autosomal recessive disease. And what that means is, so let's suppose we have some chromosomal pair in that individual. What that basically means is, these are two genes, two alleles for the same type of enzyme, for some specific type of enzyme. And in this particular case, this gene is for the enzyme we call galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase and we'll see what it does in just a moment. And in individuals who have classic galactosemia, this gene or both of these genes are actually mutated. And what that means is these individuals cannot actually form a functional enzyme. And what that means is if this enzyme isn't actually formed or is dysfunctional, what that means is it can carry out a specific type of function. Now, this enzyme is actually an important enzyme that is involved in the galactose glucose interconversion pathway that we focused on in detail in the previous lecture. So recall from the previous lecture that when galactose is uptaken by the cells, the galactose must be transformed into glucose 6-phosphate before it can actually begin the breakdown into ATP molecules. And the conversion of galactose into glucose 6-phosphate is known as galactose-glucose interconversion pathway. And within this pathway, we have four different steps that are catalyzed by four different enzymes. And one of these steps, step number two, is catalyzed by galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase. So what this enzyme does under normal conditions is it takes galactose 1-phosphate. In the presence of UDP glucose, this enzyme catalyzes the transformation into UDP galactose. So this becomes UDP galactose and the UDP glucose becomes glucose 1-phosphate. And then the glucose 1-phosphate can basically go on to form glucose 6-phosphate, which can be fed, incorporated into the glycolytic pathway, and the UDP galactose can be transformed into the UDP glucose. That's what happens on the normal condition. So normally, the galactose is transformed into galactose 1-phosphate, then this one is transformed into this molecule and a glucose 1-phosphate, and then two more steps take place, and ultimately we're able to break down the galactose into ATP molecules. But if both of these alleles both of these genes are impaired in some way. That means we cannot actually create that functional galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase. And so what happens is our cells will be able to break down the, galact uh, the lactose into these two molecules. Then the galactose will be broken down or will be uh, essentially modified to form the galactose 1-phosphate, but the galactose 1-phosphate will not be able to form these molecules here. And so what that means is, as we ingest the lactose, if we have classic galactosemia, there will be a buildup of this galactose as well as the galactose 1-phosphate, and that can be very toxic to our body. Why? Well, let's take a look at the following conversion. So if there's a buildup of galactose inside our body, well, first of all, this is the cyclic galactose and this is its open chain conformation. And so if there's a buildup of the galactose, an enzyme known as aldose reductase will use this molecule and the H plus ion to transform this sugar molecule into an alcohol known as galactitol. Now, galactitol, if there's a buildup of galactitol in certain areas of our body, that can cause very, very dangerous conditions. So, 
the high concentration of galactose and subsequent high concentrations of the alcohol galactitol is toxic to the body and it can actually cause damage to many areas of our body. For instance, it can cause liver enlargement. It can cause damage to our liver and that, and that eventually might actually progress to cirrhosis. And cirrhosis is basically a very advanced form of liver damage. It can also form or it can also cause cataract formation, delayed mental development, ovarian failure, and a feeling of laziness, so lack of enthusiasm, and so forth. So what I'd like to focus on in this lecture is cataract formation. So how does a buildup of the galactose actually lead to cataract formation? Well, what exactly is a cataract? Well, cataract quite literally means there is a wall of water that exists in the lens of our eye. And that basically decreases the transparency of the lens. And so we essentially become blind so we can't see very well. Now, how does an increase in galactose actually lead to the building of a cataract? Well, inside the, inside the lens, we essentially have cells. And when the cells, when there's an increase in the galactose concentration inside the cell, the galactose begins to slowly convert into the galactitol as a result of the activity of the aldose reductase. And so there's a buildup in the concentration of this alcohol inside the cells of the lens and inside the lens itself. Now, if there's a buildup, of this metabolite inside the cell that will create a hypertonic environment. An environment in which we'll essentially have a high concentration of solute molecules and that will cause the flow of water into the lens of the eye. And if water flows into the lens of the eye, that is precisely what will cause a cataract to form because a cataract by its very definition is essentially a wall of water that forms inside that eye, decreasing the transparency of that eye.